where you have been taught an incomplete doctrine, but at the same time, you were told that you were being taught a complete doctrine. So when you walk in the door, you really didn't come because uh, you felt that this minister and ministry could enlighten you in any way, but you just felt like, well, church, uh, they seem to have it together. I like the music, and uh, the pastor seems like he's going places, and I want to be with a going thing. And God knows that uh, in my 40 years in the ministry, some of the worst suffering that I've had to endure in my spirit has come from church folk who walked in the door and thought they knew it all. And when you preach a message, especially this message, on the need for the Holy Ghost, you are like that duck that will not allow that to soak in. Because where you came from, they told you you had it all. Now, Apollos was a great preacher. Look at what the Word of God says in verse 24 of chapter 18. He was a Jew, meaning he was one from God's chosen nation. He had embraced the religion of the Old Testament. He was born at Alexandria, which was one of the uh, centers of Greek culture. He was an eloquent man. He was mighty in the scripture. And anybody who came out from under the teaching of Dr. Apollos, they knew they didn't have anything that that little sanctified uh, preacher like Paul could correct them on. Because you understand that I've been under Dr. Reverend Dr. Apollos for 20 some years. And everybody know that Dr. Apollos is a great preacher. He matriculated through uh, the university. He has his master's and his doctorate in theology. And pre you don't even have a degree. I, I've been sitting under Reverend Dr. Paulus for 20 years. And Reverend Dr. Paulus was a good man. But he did not have a full knowledge of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and consequently even though he had his doctorate he was limited and one cannot lead where he does not go and one cannot teach what he does not know and every day I can listen on radio and sometimes on television and I hear Preachers who are still trying to tell folk, stay clear of that stuff. You know, don't pay no attention to this tongue speaking and all of that. And when I listen at them, these are the same preachers who from that denominational days, way back when we had the tambourine and was shouting and dancing and was throwing up our hands, they said it didn't take that way back when they were only called Christians and we were called saints. They laughed at us for being called saints. Hello. I'm the same one that said, ain't no saints. They all dead. Now they all calling their members saints. Now they're lifting up their hands and they're shouting hallelujah. Now they'll even dance every once in a while. And everything that we told them 50 years ago was right. They said it was wrong then. Now they've embraced everything we've got except the tongues. And if your batting average is 99%, then they ought to realize that if it took them 100 years to find out you were right about all of the other, it shouldn't take them another hundred to find out that you were right about speaking with tongues. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Dr. Apollos, oh my God. Look at him, verse 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, 
And being fervent, he was a sincere man in spirit. He wasn't a phony. He spake and taught diligently.